Well, you know that when I start recording videos and posting videos to the internet, that I'm really kind of going through it, right? So I realized this morning that while I have a why, I may have never told the world my why. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Jared Malott. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Earlier this year, I was able to leave the full-time work grind to begin my coaching career. I made this decision as a result of refiling for my veterans benefits and being in a financial position to, um, because of my wife and because I'm a disabled veteran, to be able to uh, leave a full-time job and basically for the last couple years I've been working and coaching for basically for free. Um, the reason that I did that is because I realized that I have a why. I have a reason that I'm here. And a lot of people, I realize, have lost their purpose and their way, and I'm hoping maybe this can help you. While I was on active duty in the Marine Corps um, over 15 years ago, my battle buddy, RJ Rady, my best friend, um, my roommate, my he died while we were on active duty. And the Marine Corps sent me home six months later. He died in April. I got medically separated in October. I even got to come home a month before my actual separation date. Clear, clearly, uh, what happened to RJ affected a lot of people when they push away uh, the person closest to him so that they don't have to continue to deal with the fallout. For more than a decade, well, I mean, better part of like 17 years, I've been dealing with anxiety, depression, and PTSD primarily um, for the first, you know, decade plus. Uh, I was pretty depressed uh, that I couldn't be there and that I couldn't save him, that I couldn't keep him from dying, that I, I felt like I let him down. I let his family down. I've been ashamed. I'm not a combat veteran, so uh, for a lot of people, my story hasn't mattered which is crazy because I was in the Marine Corps Infantry and I was in 2nd Battalion, 2nd second, second Marines Weapons Company, the most combat deployed unit in Marine Corps history. In fact, when I got to them, they were on their fifth straight deployment to Iraq. So I've always told people I'm not a war hero, but I know some. I'm so lucky that they didn't get put back on their sixth straight deployment to Iraq. Instead, they got put on a boat. I was aboard the USS Baton for nine days. Anyway, so, RJ died for a long time. I blame myself. I've been very depressed. I lost my friend. In 2018, his wife reached out to me, having her fa the, his family having struck out, her having struck out. Uh, she tells me RJ was murdered. She shares a photo. She has a name. She has inform. She has a text confirmation that the individual knew RJ and also um, she admitted to doing it. She admitted that RJ is not even the only person that she did this to. Long story short, and again, I'm not like, I'm not saying anything I shouldn't. So that people shouldn't be listening to this and being like, oh, he's, he's breaking rules. Nope, nope, we're not breaking any rules. My battle buddy died while I was on active duty. And for over a decade, I blamed myself for his death thinking that it was a suicide and that he and, and that he just couldn't make it until we got out. We had both gotten hurt during a workup. I hurt my shoulder. He blew out his knee. Like I said, we lived together. So it was, for the record, it's crazy to be on a workup for a deployment and both of you break bones and can't, and can't like, and have to have surgery, right? So I hurt my shoulder really bad. For those of you that know, like I can't hardly feel my right hand. It's starting to turn purple hanging down by my side, right? Uh, my shoulder hurts all the time, right? So that has affected me forever. In 20, you got to understand, in 2013, I went to the VA and said, I need some help. I'm clearly struggling. One of my friends uh, told me I was manic, right? And so I went to the VA. I need men help with mental health. Clearly, I've got issues. Uh, this is before I found out that he had been murdered and was told by the VA. And I don't know by who, because I know that's going to come up eventually. But at the VA, in a little office... 
this nice lady told me, uh, because RJ didn't die in combat and you guys weren't in Iraq or Afghanistan, it's not a priority for the VA. We, basically, we will get back to you when we can treat your mental health. So that meant that over the next several years, I would go to the VA for my annual. I would tell them what happened while I was on active duty, and then I would never see that doctor again. I would get a new doctor the next time I went until the last year or so I've gone in and now I've seen the same primary doctor like two or three times, right? Understand that I'm in a position where I've been telling this story for a long time that while I was on active duty, my battle buddy died. For like a little over a decade straight, I was like super fucking sad and depressed and I blame myself and wrongly, for the record, I'm in therapy. I go every month now, um, but wrongly, I blame myself for his death, okay? And then in 2018, I found out that he was murdered from his wife, his surviving spouse, whose RJ's family had tried to get... Uh, to clear RJ's name and were unable to do so. So her reaching out to me in 2018, and this is over six years now I've been dealing with this fresh new hell, okay? My battle buddy, while I was on active duty, who I was super depressed about his death, thinking it was my fault that he committed suicide, right? While we were on active duty, it turns out that he was murdered. And allow me to explain, long story short, we both got surgery within about a week of each other. When you get surgery, when you're on active duty, they give you convalescent leave. I got to come home back to Indiana for a month. And I actually did what you're supposed to do, which is like, you're supposed to go to the gym. You're supposed to report to your command. You're supposed to go to physical therapy. I did all of those things and like maintained some sense of body weight. And like, I wasn't in shape to fight, but like I was, I was maintaining body weight and losing weight even. Uh, while I was at home for f doing physical therapy and uh, almost a month in, they were like, you're doing such a good job. We're going to give you an extra month. So for everybody always acts like the Marine Corps is like the worst fucking thing in the world. What just came out of my mouth? They were like, hey, we're seeing progress with your shoulder. You you're, you're nowhere near gaining feeling back in your fingers. But like, hey, you're at least showing up and doing the work. And the, and the guy that's writing you up is giving you stars, right? So I got to stay an extra month. While I got to stay at home an extra month recovering from surgery, RJ died. Uh, the night that he died, he texted me and said that he felt like his heart was going to stop the other way, right? Not like his heart rate's out the roof and he's going to have a fucking heart attack. Like his heart's going to fucking stop functioning. And I was like, well, you know, you need to go see a doctor. You need to go to the Navy hospital. You know, go right now. We had both been injured. We both had surgery. We both had wildly different experiences with prescription drugs. For the record, I'm a giant pussy when it comes to prescriptions. I don't like taking pills. I don't take pills well. Uh, I don't feel good. And if you've ever read like the negative side effects of a prescription drug, that's what happens when I take prescription drugs is like I now I can't get a heart on and I can't hold my bowels in anymore and my nose won't stop running, right? Like that's what happens to me when I take like medication and keep in mind, like I ain't got none of them problems and I ain't on none of them meds, right? So I'll just be a little crazy, okay? So in 2018, RJ's wife tells me RJ was murdered, shows me the evidence. Here's the person that did it. Here's my communication with them and then admitting it. I have family members that are cops, I have friends that are cops. I have acquaintances that I know that are cops. I have told an unnumber, a number of people with badges this. And not a single person has ever said, hey, you don't happen to have that person's name. Do you happen to know where that person is? What's RJ's wife's name? I would reach out to her uh, for the record. So keep in mind for the, for the last, you know, six, seven years on top of depression and anxiety, which came because my battle buddy died while we were on active duty. And I blame myself because I was such a goody two shoes that I was doing the right thing. They gave me another month. They didn't give him a month, another month. He had to come back. Right. So think about uh, the narrow line between doing what you're supposed to do and not. Do you understand now? So what happens is RJ Rady, who's just had major surgery, is on base. It's a, I think it was a weekend night. I don't remember the last time I spoke to him. I can't even remember the day he died, but I know that he texted me at 9 p.m. and he died at like four or five the next morning. Okay. So uh, the Marine Corps told me uh, that they found cocaine in his uh, autopsy 
and they gave him an other than honorable discharge. And they said that he killed himself, that he that he did illegal drugs while he was on active duty and he died as a result. And that's negligence to military property or whatever. And they gave him an other than honorable. OK, um, I found out in 2018, yo, he he was murdered. Right. And there are going to be a lot of people that are going to say, like, did you do this? Did you do this? Like, I've called uh, numbers in North Carolina for police. Uh, I've, I've told people that I feel like are like on active duty in the Marine Corps that are public affairs officers who I, who I thought you were supposed to be able to go to and say like this veteran got fucked. Like, um, so, and, and to think about it is this isn't me talking that shooty, shooty, bang, bang stuff as an infantryman. I'm not talking about that mess. In fact, I don't own a gun. I don't need one. Um, and I, I wanted to also say while I'm on this rant that while you think about the path that I'm now on, I have given up full-time work. Now my veterans afford me the ability to start a coaching career. My, my now life goal is to leave a legacy. Uh, that legacy of kindness includes doubling back for your friends, making it my why, right? I love my wife, right? I love my dogs, right? But my why is that while I was on active duty in the Marine Corps, my battle buddy was murdered. And instead of honoring him, like they do people that die in combat honorably, uh, instead his death is looked at as a suicide right now. And here's the thing about that. So all of that stuff is true and happened. And I went through the Wounded Warrior Project to reapply for my benefits. And I got 50% disability for PTSD, which to me is an acknowledgement. Because if you if the, what I just told you wasn't true, do you think the VA is going to give me money? Do you think all those, the Wounded Warrior Project, VES, Veterans Evaluation Services, who I also worked with, do you think like those companies exist for fuckery? So when you're voting between now and November 5th, think about this story that I just told you and think about I would have to give up leaving a legacy and doubling back for my friend and go back to working a full-time job if Donald Trump gets elected, cancels veterans benefits. So think about that. I need all of the help that I can get and I deserve all all of the help that I can get. Do I not? I have an honorable discharge. I didn't do anything wrong. In fact, they pushed me away. So now here we are, two weeks before the most important election in my lifetime. And my your choices are at the ballot box are either you vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, and I get to keep my veterans benefits and continue to try to right this wrong with the rest of my life. Or you vote for that fucking guy and he cancels my veterans benefits and then I become a shell of myself. I go right back to working full time like everybody else just trying to grind out an existence. And then also I wanted to say with the last few minutes before my phone probably runs out of battery. For the last four or five years, I've been working in the Medicare space, helping people who have voted against their own best interests for the last 40, 50 years. People who are now fully reliant on Medicare and Medicaid to survive. Okay. For the record, I'm out of that and I don't have to have those conversations anymore. And I'm thrilled because... One of the things that I learned in that industry, one of the things that drove me away from helping the elderly and the poor with their health care is that all of those people are on Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, and they don't have enough money for food and bills. So you can vote for Kamala Harris, and I'm willing to bet over the next four years, Social Security goes up every year. Or that fucking guy has said, as a cost-cutting measure, they're going to get rid of a social safety net like Social Security. It's part of Project 2025. So for those of you that are like, Donald Trump didn't say that. Yes, he did. It's part of the Project 2025 platform. You think Roe v. Wade is their, is their fucking proudest moment? Wait till they cancel veterans benefits 
and Social Security and a, and a whole lot of people die. So that's the choices. And I think that affects people whether they're, you're young or old. Because now you know, how, how is that dude so smart and so fucked up? Now you know. How does that impact you at the ballot box?